But uh, I think everybody really, truly um, believed in the government. If they, well, that's one reason why we burned everything when we had to evacuate. So I was born and raised here, and I said my birth certificate doesn't mean the duty then as a citizenship. I was born in the Gila River relocation camp just one month before we were released. World War II was over. On my birth certificate, it lists my father's place of residency as a block number in the camps. My first memories about the camps were not of difficulty or resentment. They weren't painful or harsh. I remember that people knew each other from what camp they were in together. It was a commonality that they shared. When I was 11, I remember reading a paper my older sister wrote in high school about the relocation camps. She interviewed my family and other people. I was a bit young to understand what it said and its impact, but I knew it was unjust. Have you ever been to Japan? Or? No, I never had been to Japan. and. Uh, I believe that was a 100% American, and and uh, in fact, I rejected all uh, Japanese values. I I didn't want to go to Japanese school. I I I could never understand why my father and mother ate uh, wanted us to eat uh, rice all the time with chopsticks. Uh, you know, I thought I was all American boy, but when the war broke out, I found out different, uh, uh, physically different from the white America. So. I was single out for a lot, of, a lot of times for a, a racial uh, insults. There is a feeling in the land. Uh, it's it's not art, uh, easy to articulate about what you feel when you're on the site and um, how it affects people because there are many people that didn't experience um, incarceration on the, in the camps that are trying to preserve the memory also. So when you have no real memories like some of the younger uh, people who are younger and, and had enjoyable memories and talked about the enjoyable times, um, you search for feeling about the site, feeling about the, the land or, or the memory, even though you don't have a memory, other people's memory. One thing I've used to describe the work is a concept of remapping space or reconstruction of space. But time, I think with photography, the element of time and space is always there because it's always the moment in time that you're capturing and uh, most people think that photograph that you've captured in that moment in time is truth. By dealing with collage, by dealing with the sequence, I've, I've gone beyond that moment of truth and create some fiction in, in the work. So it's, it's, uh, it gives some creative a power and some um, to the photographer that wasn't there before. Uh, 
Normally I go to the camps alone, uh, someone has given me directions or else I'll, I'll call someone who's nearby, maybe three hours or so, and they will drive over and take me around and we'll talk about the site and they'll, they'll show me different, different places or else I'll do it alone. Um, that's what I normally do when I shoot, so that the photographs do have this feeling of, of um, no one being there, isolation and being alone. The voices, the, the audio that, that's part of these um, are supposed to be memories, are supposed to be uh, the human element. By that time, I really realized that all of us, no matter uh, whether we were citizen or not, that we were being treated like enemies. We were, we were showing our quarters, which was the horse stall, and we walked right into this little tiny room in my family, it was three adult brothers, my mother and I. Five of us slept in one little horse stall. And there was manure on the floor, and there's horse hair was stuck on the walls that they quickly whitewashed, and hair was still stuck on there. And uh, I don't know, I think we just walked into this stall, and we were, I think we were just shocked. And uh, uh, nobody said a word like saying, ooh, how awful it is, or not a word. But I just, uh, I couldn't believe I was in America, really. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, but as I, as I had gotten the first three or four sh sites, I realized I was looking for uh, archaeology, sort of uh, the remnants of, of something. That was really important, to have the evidence that it was in existence over 50 years ago and internees had actually been a part of that. Usually I find that in little inscriptions um, in the cement or else I'll find um, familiar pictures uh, from other, other publications I've gotten, um, descriptions from other publications about the site. Um, so, so one thing I, I do keep finding is uh, you know how people write in the cement uh, their name and then the date.外国人であれ、非外国人であれ、すべての日本人は上記の指定された地域から1942年4月7日火曜日の午前12時までに退去しなければならない。1942年4月2日木曜日の午前8時以降、いかなる日本人もカリフォルニア州サンフランシスコ
our crops, our stores, our fishing fleets, our machinery. We lost a great sense of our economic worth by being incarcerated during World War II. For the Japanese American people, a greater loss than economics was the shame of being in prison and the stigma that once we got out. We came out of that relocation, that imprisonment. It was something we didn't want to remember. We didn't acknowledge the experience. We just went on with life as though it never happened. But American society would still question us and our loyalty. Shikata Ganai. There's nothing we can do about it. に退去者は収容センターに出発する際には下記の荷物を抵抗しなければならない。A。家族各人のシングルイと下着。B。家族各人の化粧品。C。家族各人の余分の衣類。People were walking, um, trying to find where, where their barrack was, trying to find a, a memento, um, something to place history with also, something they recognize. Um, share that with their children. Find other people they, they knew. I called my mother and um, uh, luckily my uncle was there also. When, when I called my mother, and he, they, they were both in the camp, so we had this little uh, conversation going uh, uh, about which block I was in. And so I got the block number, block 36, and that way I could find the block. And um, um, my mother told me a little bit about uh, what they, my uncle and my father had done in our particular barrack. They had built a um, pool pond a water pond underneath the barracks. And uh, there were a number of those that we found when we w walked around the site. And that was to cool off uh, the barrack. The Indians I met at Gila um, were older, but they were like children when, when um, the camps happened. And they would just tell me the stories of what happened between them and the fence children in, in the camps. Well, this one woman had a wonderful story. She was about. I guess um, five, six, but she said she used to ride her horse along the canal near the fence and the children, and she only spoke Pima. So the Japanese American children behind the fence spoke English and um, they would try to uh, communicate somehow and touch each other with, through the fence. But, um, and then I think she had a, an older sister who was always around eating pomegranates around the fence and sharing her, her fruit. There is something there at the site that calls to you, that says something to you. It's, it's a sense, uh, and I don't want to sound too spacey, but it's, it's about the land or that, that particular place. That, that's somehow telling you that there's a photograph here, there's something important. Finding memories, that's part of, uh, I think, the search is that, um, or this artwork, is that it, it's becoming uh, my own memory, even though for me it's a collective memory. It's, it's grouping all these people's memory and um, memories and trying to make uh, something cohesive out of it, uh, sense, rational uh, obviously it's not going to be rational sense but some sense some some something to touch um, touch base with 
how do you feel about that camp experience? I know there's positive and negative things. Well, it, it's kind of hard to say because uh, as far as the negatives, you try not to dwell on that. And uh, your emotional feelings and so forth. That Because when you do think about it, uh, it was depressing to the point of... Uh, well, it, as I say, it's not something that you want to dwell on and you do think more on the positive. Mm -hmm. And I guess the fact that you survived something like that, you figure, well, if, if I got through that, I could get through just about anything. Mm -hmm.